hey gang thank you for joining me here today so my name is Tony Hansen. I know most of you are pretty familiar with who I am by now, but um, I started trading in the mid 1990s as a stock trader. And from there, it just kind of grew into every market under the sun, practically. There's so many more markets out there for traders these days than there were when I first began. Really, it was stocks. And then slowly, gradually, we started to see more futures traders come online. Um, but now, of course, you know, with cheap or practically non-existent commissions in some cases, it's opened a whole new world for the individual trader. And I know most of you out here joining us here today are, future, are Forex traders, but what you're going to find from my class here today is that you can take everything that you learn here and apply it to any market. So it doesn't matter if you're a crypto trader, if you're trading Forex, if you're trading gold, stocks, options, no matter what, you're going to be able to take it and apply it to those markets because the key is that it's rooted in technical analysis, which is funny because it's one of the main ways that traders learn how to trade these days. But when I first got started, it was kind of viewed as voodoo, you know, they're wasn't a lot of belief in the scientific data behind it, but it's something scientists have used for ages to help understand human emotions and patterns of emotions. We see it most prominently over the last year, of course, with the COVID studies. And I've even taken the charts of the current COVID data with regard to infection rates and everything and discussed them in my trading group where we looked at predicting what upcoming COVID projections are going to look at like and how they end up following through just the same way they would on a stock. And it's because you're basically just tracking human emotion and biases and euphoria and fear. And over time, it's, it's just repetitive. So um, you can see I'm not going to be going into a lot of slides here in my presentation today. I run a trading group these days. I ran one full time for years. Um, but now I do it where we just meet every day at noon for an hour. I teach a specific topic every week where we're focusing on that every day at noon. And um, we look for live examples so I can show real life market examples, help them predict, you know, what's coming in the afternoon and into the next day. And it's really beneficial because you get to see how things play out, pros and cons, not like the picture perfect scenarios that you might find in like a, a prefabricated uh, PowerPoint presentation. So what I'm doing today is a little bit of that with you guys. And uh, at the end of the class, you'll have the opportunity to join me for my League of Traders if you'd like. We have a special offer here for June where you can get essentially um, a month free, uh, where you can get three months for uh, $200. And again, we meet every single day at noon. All of our sessions are recorded. And we also have a channel on Slack which I'll show you here in a little bit as to how that works to um, propel your education because in that Slack channel, we are creating a database of different strategies and patterns and looking at pros and cons on those patterns. Essentially, I always tell traders to keep a trading journal, but let's face it, a lot of traders just aren't going to do that. <laughs> For one reason or not, they might start, but keeping up with it can be difficult, especially if you end up doing too many trades in a day. And so our Slack channels offer the opportunity to go in and study different aspects of the market so you can focus on specific strategies and learn your pros and cons. So in League of Traders, this, the last couple of weeks, we've been focusing upon the head and shoulders pattern. Now, this is a pattern you probably taught from the very beginning. If you get into technical analysis, most of you are all quite familiar with it, but I am going to teach it to you a little bit differently. It's not going to be what you'll find in at least the textbooks that I've perused out there. We go into a lot more detail 
and we use different types of entry triggers and stop triggers than you're going to typically find. We use some evolving stops and um, our target levels are based upon what's happening in larger time frames. So in some cases, a head and shoulders pattern might give you, for example, a one-to-one -one measured move compared to the move off of the head and then coming out of the shoulder. And in other cases, you're gonna be looking at a full fledged total trend move where you get a brand new trend. So I'm gonna close down this PowerPoint introduction page here for you. And we're gonna go over and take a look at some of our charts and detailing what makes up a head and shoulders pattern. So to begin with, I'm gonna scroll this over and I'm just gonna give us a blank screen to work from where we are just kinda looking at this as a clean slate over here. And then we're gonna come back to, this is the Euro pound. And let me grab my annotation tool. So this is what most of you will be familiar with when you're seeing a head and shoulders formation. Got my coffee in my way of my mouse there. <laughs> so this is what it'll look like. This will be your left shoulder, your head, and your right shoulder. And then another terminology or term that you'll need to know in here is the neckline. So your neckline is basically just connecting the difference where you get your pivot low here to your pivot low here. Now, this brings up a couple of core things that we need to pay attention to. Some traders will use um, entry triggers where, let me put on like the traditionally taught triggers. Traditionally taught triggers will be to short when your neckline breaks or even to short when your left shoulder breaks. So a couple of problems with this obviously. For one thing, if this is what you're going to be looking at, by the time you're getting in, you've got a lot of movement already in play here. And as we chat here, feel free to ask any questions that you might have here as well into um, the chat box because I can see you guys as well in there. Now, how many of you were taught this when you're looking at your head and shoulders patterns? This would be one and this would be two. Out of these, one is going to be the best because when we're looking at a target level on these, your first original kind of main support level is going to be taking this impulse move down from the head to the start of the right shoulder, looking at the start of the right shoulder and down and giving you a measured move. So this is a typical initial first target on a head and shoulders pattern. And this is what's going to hit probably a good 90% of the time. So if you're getting into this at one, then maybe you get a two to one return compared to your risk or one and a half to one return compared to your risk. If you're getting in here at two, well, typical stop level is going to be up here. So your return compared to your risk isn't that great. It's not so bad if this is a really exhausted uptrend and you're looking at this as a, as a total reversal where you're looking at a completely new downtrend. But otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. So when you see me looking to get into a head and shoulders pattern, there's a couple of things that we look at. First of all, I'm going to bring in some Fibonacci tools. So the first Fibonacci tool you will see me use is going to be the Fib time extension. I'm going to take that from the left shoulder to the high up here. 
And you'll notice that the right shoulder is right smack at that 200%. Now, this is on Ninja Trader. So in some of your charting platforms, that 200% is going to read as 100%. Basically, keep in mind, all we're looking at is that this is just the 100% extension from here to here and then over to here. So you're looking at a one-to-one -one ratio here. Now, what we want to see with that right shoulder is that that right shoulder is as close to that 100% time extension as possible. Now you'll also see a couple of other numbers on here. I've got a 223.6 and I've got a 238.2. Where these come into play is that these are the numbers we need to see confirmation on. We need to see that by the time the 238.2% Fibonacci time extension or 138.2 if you're on a different charting platform, it has to be selling off by then. It can't have broken here, kind of gone into a range, and then is still playing out past that range. It needs to be showing definitive selling by the time it gets to the 238.2. So let's put this on here as a note. By the time our time extension gets to 238.2% or 138.2 on a different platform, we must be seeing confirmation with strong price action to the downside. We also want to see our right shoulder as close to 200 or 100% time extension as possible. We also want to see a neckline tilted higher. So these are some of these main pros on our checklist. Oops, let me erase the wrong one. There we go. These are some of our main pros that we want to see on our checklist of you know, what to look for for a head and shoulders. Now, to dive down even further, we can bring in another Fibonacci tool. And this is one that you probably don't see very often. And that is going to be the Fibonacci fan. So with our Fibonacci fan, what this is going to do is it is going to allow us to be better able to time that right shoulder. So in this case, if we just go from the high to the low of this movement, you'll notice that our pivot over here is pretty close to where a 76.4% Fibonacci fan is going to be. So right in here is our 76.4% Fibonacci fan. So if you're looking at your time development and you're also looking at your fan development, we want those to come together and converge at that point so that we have that joint entry timing zone here. I'm just going to use the typical 100% time extension. Even though on an initial trader, it is going to be 200% just to make it easier for you guys. So keep in mind, this is Ninja, tra um, Ninja Trader is going to be 200%. And for example, like TradeStation will be 100%.
So that's going to give you that really key zone. Now, some other things that we can do to create a more picture perfect setup is to look at the back and forth action within this right shoulder. Now, there's some other fan levels in here now. So if we have a pivot high that is hitting the 61.8 or 50% on our first wave bounce, that is going to help it hold the 76.4 for the second wave bounce. So if this pivot again here with a two wave correction hooks up with either the 50% fan or the 61.8% fan, that's going to be a pro. So let's write that down as another pro. First bounce in right shoulder is into 50% or 61.8% fan, then high probability of a strong breakdown at the 76.4% fan. And again, converging with the time development at that 100% level. So this is starting to shape up of what we would see a typical strong head and shoulders pattern form. Now, some other traits to watch for would be a volume decline throughout the entire shoulder here. I can type here. Steady volume decline in shoulder, especially during that last little section there. That's especially going to be important right in that last little section. So these are just some of the basics of what a core fan is going to look like. Now, stop level and entry. So here's where I do things a little bit different. So for an entry trigger, what I am going to use is a smaller time frame setup. So for example, if we've got maybe a little mini head and shoulders in here, I'm going to use that small little head and shoulders there. I'm going to be dropping down to a smaller time frame basically. So if this is say a, mm, a 30 second chart here on our euro pound, then I might drop down to a 10 or even a five second chart to look for timing for a setup. Now, when you get down to some of the smaller time frames, if you're using candlestick charts, they might not look pretty. They might start to look all gappy and blotchy and you can't really make out the wave count. That's where you can go and switch to a line chart to see some of the detail a little bit better. And I'll show you that here in a minute so that you can see what I'm referencing. But as soon as it comes into that convergence and things are all coming together there, I'm going to be dropping down to a really small time frame. Now, traditional stop level on this is to place your stop right over that right shoulder, giving it enough room for wiggle. What that means is that if you're looking at the typical bars in a trend move or a trend congestion, take the size of those average bars and put that on top of your high. That is going to help protect you from getting flushed out. Now keep this in mind because as the head and shoulders continues to develop, in order for it to show us immediate continuation, not go into another range that could be doubling that, it's going to need to hold that 76.4% fan. So we can take that range that we saw from an average bar size and we can keep that stacked above that fan. And you'll actually see I have this fan cushion zone. I've got the 76.4 and the 78.6. 
So 76.4, 78.6, 78.7, 78.6, that's my cushion zone of what I'm looking for for resistance. So for this to go and give us a good continuation, we want to see that holding, that zone. And if it goes into another bear flag, that's going to be remaining your resistance zone. So if you're looking for a nice strong continuation of a trend, you can continue to use that as a trailing stop zone to help keep your, your stops tighter. Keep in mind though, in some markets, you'll see waves of two versus waves of three. So it can go two waves down, two waves sideways, and then back down. So if you're using that 76.4, you might get a break here where the trend can still continue, but it goes into a longer period of correction or congestion first. So you have to know, you know what is your larger bias as well if you're willing to wait for that or not. So for those of you in Zoom, you can actually do a screenshot of this page. Just click on the save button. Looks like a little box with an arrow pointing down. So you can save this screenshot here to use as your template. Now, a uh, question from Keith, are there any programs that identify head and shoulders and other patterns mainly for stocks? Also, whether there are time frames with certain stocks or commodities? Um, you know, people have been looking to develop that for years. So I know that there are a number of them out there. I haven't used any with great consistency. Um, it's actually been quite a few years that I've used uh, a lot of stock scanning platforms other than just basic um, gap plat patterns. Um, Harvey says that he's aware of some of them. Ninja Trader actually has some. Well, that's cool. Ninja Trader has a lot of them that um, both their users will develop as well as um, what their programmers will put into as well. Like, pretty much most charting platforms out there have built-in programs. These days, I'm trading a lot of futures contracts. So for me, I don't really need to do as much scanning because I have my charts up at all times. But when I was predominantly trading stocks, I had a ton of scanning platforms that I was using for different things because it would help me limit down, you know, where to put my focus on those days. and. Um, Today, even today, like my favorites are just looking at gap gap scans because it shows me where the volatility and the momentum is going to be in individual stocks. Let me mute my phone, you guys. Sorry about that. So let's switch on over here and I'm going to show you some examples of this. This is, again, our textbook. But as you know, not everything is perfectly textbook, right? We don't always have beautiful setups like this. So let's go look at some of them that are not quite as pretty. And for this, I'm going to continue to use our pound. I'm going to clear my thing here. And we'll go back to our chart that I had over here. And what you'll see here is that we, ha we have a couple of head and shoulders patterns that have come into play. There's really quite a few of them going on here. And here's where I was talking about earlier how things can get blocky in the Forex market on different time frames. And you can choose to go up and change your chart to um, a line chart to make it a little bit clearer at times. So sometimes you'll see some of the movement back and forth a little bit better on the line charts. I apologize. The uh, default on this is really light. But to start with, we're just going to use our candlesticks and then we'll go back. So when you get a head and shoulders pattern, there's many places that you can start to watch for them to form. So they can happen after you get two or three waves up, for example. So you might have one wave up. You get a second wave up. And you start to notice that, hey, that's, you know, that's starting to pull back pretty fast. There's a possibility that maybe we could get a shoulder forming 
over on that side. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that if we looked at this as left shoulder potential, it's pretty flat. So another thing that we would note with shoulder development is it's better if it's not a totally flat shoulder, that we see some sort of angle with that shoulder. Not it doesn't have to be an extreme angle, but just something that kind of pulls it in and gives us a little bit better of a peak to it. Then ideally what we would see is coming up into a head that it would be a little bit more gradual than what we saw going up into the right shoulder. So let me mark those down. So these are gonna be some pros. So stronger impulse move into left shoulder than into the pro perspective head and also then a gradual pullback in left shoulder that is not just a flat channel. So these are going to be some of our pros here as we're watching this. Now also something else to watch with our pullback here for a prospective shoulder Ideally, that shoulder is going to be comparable to some of the previous zones of congestion and not substantially shorter than them. So in this case, you can see it lasts about the same amount of time as these two did, not as long as this one did, but it wasn't just a really tiny little base here either. So if that had just tried to go right there, less of a chance that that would have been a shoulder. So we also want the shoulder to last a comparable amount of time compared to the corrections of previous impulse moves that are similar to the one that goes into the shoulder. So this is your impulse move into the shoulder. Here, especially here, those are the ones you're going to want to compare. So if the correction lasts as long as those previous corrections, that's good. If it's substantially shorter, not so good because it could just be a kneecap and continue with a stronger trend. So that's another pro. A shoulder that lasts as long as comparable corrections to impulse waves that are similar to the one going into the shoulder. So at this point, you know, we don't know if this is going to go into I had and shoulders here yet. These traits so far are pros. You can do your little save button there to save it. So that's something nice to watch. You get a little bit of a shift in momentum there too. At the highest is nice. Now let's see what happens though. What we would need to see, we've already got a negative because of that doing that flat base here. Notice what is happening as this pulls in. We no longer have a neckline that would tilt higher. What this means is that while this could still bring in more selling over here, it opens up the potential for this to create a megaphone or just a longer zone of congestion that could then go and flip back around again. 
So our neckline, not tilting to the upside there, is going to be a negative. And if we put on our hip time extensions here, we can watch how this plays out. So this pops back up in here and it has the potential to then go and do that next move up. Look here, we actually have an inverse head and shoulders attempt here. So this is an example of where we end up with a con, where then when we get the time development, here's where we're at our 200%. So if it was going for a head and shoulders, that would be where your 200% is. But instead we get this shift here where we end up flipping this back around into an inverse head and shoulders. So we can have traits that we can be looking at that can give us a heads up that we have potential for a head and shoulders, but won't eventually develop into them. So those traits that we were just looking at, those go on the checklist for when you're coming into a resistance level and looking at that possibility of a head and shoulders to watch for. Now over here, if we look at that one, I'm gonna move this fib time extension over. Maybe, maybe it's easier if I just remove it. Put it back on here. Here we're looking at the potential for an inverse head and shoulders. So at this point, one of our cons that we had earlier with the flat base is no longer a con because now we've got that shift. Here's our strong move. We get a nice little kind of additional shift here where the channel changes here. So that's kind of helping turn things around. We've got a pull up higher here. And look at this pivot here, you guys. I've got another fib level on here. This is a 161.8% fib time extension. Look at where this pivot is taking place in relationship to that 161.8. Is it before, at, or after? So the fact that the 161.8 or again 61.8 is after the pivot high, that's a pro for us here. What's our con though? Where's our neckline? Yeah, our neckline is Going to the upside, I'll make it a different color so it stands out better too. So here's our neckline. So what did I tell you the risk is with the neckline? We might end up with a megaphone, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean we're not going to get some more buying coming in, but it has an increased risk that we could get another flush to create a megaphone 
before that turns around again. So in something like this, if we took this as a buy setup here, we could run into that ending up and breaking lower more easily. So it has that increased risk. Also, notice this low here is not at the 200%, is it? It's early, it's before the 200%. So if we clear this here, our pivot for our pullback to get going should be almost exactly at that 200%. So now we have a little bit of a mixture of pros and cons. So because of that kind of flatlining here, with the move down. This is something where I would typically wait for a flush and then look for it to go as a buy. Because of the neckline, it increases the risk of that extra flush. And it means that the final shoulder for a head could be a little bit further over than that 200% is going to be. So if we do see a pivot before the 200%, then this is a pretty extreme momentum move on the downside. And we have no shift in momentum yet to try to turn that back around. So we're seeing some pros and cons coming into play here. Now let's look at how this unfolds for us. So here is that extra flush. And now at this point, you got a nice measured move here, brings in that extra move. Our shoulder here is pretty darn close still to that 200% just within a couple of bars. So this now becomes a better spot to look for a buy setup. I often wouldn't typically take it right there. I would wait for a retest, something that would show that the momentum is shifting there. So this is an example where we no longer have a picture perfect one. And we also would have to pay a lot of attention to what's going on in the larger time frame because if this is the upper end of like really strong resistance on a daily time frame, then this could just be going into a longer range that ends up breaking lower. So this is no longer a really beautiful inverse head and shoulders at this point because of just those little details that have shifted it from what our textbook setup looked like. Now it can still be a good setup, but it has to have the larger time frame going for it, which if we pull this over, you can see here, that our larger time frame was favorable, because it is pulling it back down, right into the first retest of that breakout zone. So that tells us that this really is a good zone for an inverse head and shoulders to happen. Now let's look at a couple of other ones here. We've got one that is really pretty and we've got one that is a little bit less than pretty. So I'm gonna show you the pretty one first. And that is the last one on our screen over here. Clear these. And we'll just kind of focus on this one here. So starting, we've got an impulse move over here that goes into these three highs. This is something I call a momentum reversal. But if there's something off with the momentum reversal, it can go into a pattern that I call a momentum reversal plus, which is basically taking your time development from here to here to here. So that that is measured time development and that ends up being your mean short. And in this case, the negative for a momentum reversal is we have time correction. So in my momentum reversal pattern, we need Vs and inverse Vs, and then it creates a short. This still went to the first main target level, but it um, was not able to fully turn around there.
Hold on one second, you guys. So a momentum reversal plus then, it creates uh, an extra flush that takes these people out now at these higher highs here. And this also now means that we can go into a head and shoulders. And there's two places we can do the time development on a head and shoulders now. We can get the smaller head and shoulders that can start here, but you can also get bigger head and shoulders that can go out even further. So what that means is that we can have a shoulder here and then it can go into another shoulder over there. So let's put the time development on this one. And David, can you let me know, um, do I have 45 minutes or do I have an hour here? Let's see if he is in here for us. Let me grab my other tool. Hey, Tony, you have uh, until 55 after. So okay, great, cool, so thank you. Yeah, about 15 more minutes. Awesome. So here's what we're looking at for this first head and shoulders here. So you'll notice our head has kind of these multiple highs going on. So when it first kind of starts to shift is right here. And then when it finally shifts, it's right here. So oftentimes when there's kind of like that wiggle room, I'm just gonna cut it in half. And sometimes you'll see things that are even more distinct where it will have, I can move up here and go like this and I'll have like a double head zone. So when that happens, go right smack through the middle of those two and use that for your head. So if you have a double head, use that. And it gives you that zone of what to look for. Now I'm okay with that right shoulder happening as long as it's within a couple of bars of where it needs to be. Sometimes what you'll find is that the pivot is going to be substantially earlier. And what that often means is that if it comes up here and it's early, like let's say it is before your 161.8, it could go in and even create a right shoulder like that. And your 200% might line up with your smaller right shoulder within that. So if you have a, just a two-way correction, you want it pretty close to that 200%. If it goes into a head and shoulders pattern, then that head and shoulders pattern within that um, right shoulder, then your 200% can line up with that right shoulder of the smaller shoulder. So that will work as well in there. So we're pretty close in here. What is important is that within this zone here, we've got a shift in momentum. Nice, beautiful shift in momentum. So two waves up, extra little two wave flush. That's about as picture perfect as you can get here. Our neckline is tilted to the upside, not extreme to the upside, but it is tilted to the upside. But our fan, our fan is gonna get tricky on this one. So I'm gonna grab my fan tool. And what you can see here is that in this move to the downside, we have an extreme momentum move. So if we need our 200% time development and our 76.4% fib fan to converge to give us a good setup, that's not happening here, is it? The reason for that is because that this momentum is so strong on the downside. If you had a double top or double bottom, you could take that fan over to the first high. Let's see if I can grab it, right? So let's say if there was a high over here, you could take it to the first high over there to even it out and make it more valid. We don't have that situation here. They're just too close together. Let me clear my other drawing so we can see this a little bit better. So what we can do to validate this is we can hook up 
that first pivot with either the 51 or the 50% or the 61.8% fan, depending on how strong that move is. So the 50% line is this one right here. So that's going to be the farthest. So that tells us this is our maximum zone of resistance that we would want to see for that right shoulder. And again, a lot of them you might see hook up with the, the um, 61.8 and it will hold perfectly with the 61.8. So to tell you which one's working best, look at where you're kind of getting them hitting. And that tells you you're at a good fan level. So it's a little trick there. And notice that that puts it together with your fan and your time extension now at this point. Now for stop levels here, you'll notice that since our fan now has our stop a little bit higher than that, what I would do is I would take that and draw a parallel channel going along the fan here. You could even manipulate it where you hook it up with that so that it hooks up with your 76.4 to go on down like that to help it out. Now, keep in mind, these are just additional tools, Edward. You don't have to use these on here, but what they're doing is they're allowing you to determine, is this a higher probability setup or is it a lower probability setup? So what I just showed you here is an advanced technique. You can use the very basic fib fan here and say, oh, hey, you know what? I'm not getting that. 76.4 converging with that 200% time extension. So I'm just going to take the fan off. I'm not going to worry about trying to use the advanced technique for doing it. But by using that advanced technique, what it does is it's now going to help you with your trailing stop trend placement. So you can start to move your stops down not using above pivot highs, but to keep it going along that level with your trend. So for example, as this is moving lower here, a lot of times you're not gonna traditionally move your stop until it breaks to a new low and then move your stop above the previous high if you're playing the trend. But if you're using the fan, you can be continuing to move that stop down and it's gonna protect most of your position faster that way. So that's the advantage of using a fan. Do you have to? Absolutely not. Do you have to learn the more complicated, so forth, advanced way of doing it? Absolutely not. But what it's going to do is it's going to improve your, your longer term outlook as far as um, how well you do with managing your positions. So you're gonna find lots of head and shoulders patterns that don't fit within these textbook means. But when you use the textbook versions, you're going to have better return compared to what you're risking, and you're going to have a higher percentage of success rate. It's going to help take off some of that hesitancy that you have when you're taking a trade. So you, you'll you have less of a chance of second guessing yourself. And if you do have, if you do second guess yourself, you have a set written rule that you can fall back on. So you can say, oh my gosh, I, I'm feeling really nervous about this trade. Should I move my stop? Can I move my stop? But you'll have a very definitive way of moving your stop. So it takes some of that guesswork out of it. Does that make sense? There are even substantially more complicated specific patterns that regard to head and shoulders 
that will go into more details. And a lot of traders, they think, oh, well, such and such a pattern is just so arbitrary. It's not really the case. There are a lot of rules that can shift, like in language. You know, when you're learning language, for example, cat, bat, rat, you learn basic spellings for that. So the template that I gave you for the head and shoulders is like learning cat, bat, or rat. And when you learn sentence structure, the cat ate the rat. Simple sentence structure. But then things can get more complicated. You go into spellings where it's a it's I B for E except after C or in setting like A as a neighbor or way. And you're learning all of those exceptions along the way too. So these really simple tools here that I've given you, these are going to help you take the highest probability head and shoulders patterns without as much of that second guessing. And then you can get in and you can start to learn more of the variations where, hey, it's still a head and shoulders. Hey, it's still really valid, even though it doesn't fit the criteria that I was given. So like the one over here. This is still a head and shoulders over here, but like how I said, you can have a head and shoulders within a head and shoulders. For example, this can go and come on, let me grab it. There we go. You can have this where this might have based out here longer again and given a secondary setup here. If that did that, and based out twice as long here, that would be another good setup point based upon the larger head and shoulders. In this case, it went early and there's very specific reasons for why it went early, but we won't get into that here. But the same thing over here, you can have your smaller head and shoulders and you can get bigger head and shoulders as well and paying attention to neckline and things like that they're going to help you out so i hope that my template helps you know clear up some of those i can show you go through let me grab something quick here this is the slack channel that we have in liga traders and what you will see here is that our traders are helping to propagate this specific channel with examples from their own trades and looking at pros and cons and looking at the follow through. And you can learn from them. You can learn from myself as I also will post my own charts in here and my own trades as well. And on each of these, there's also threads. So you'll find threads going into more of the details, questions as to whether we should have gotten in on certain levels, and then answers in those replies where you will see threads happening here too. So, you know, responses to the different things as well. They'll have additional um, notes on the trades. So it's a great platform where you guys can learn more about different things. For example, if you want to study Fibonacci fans, not only from the very basic usage, but also getting into the more complicated usage as to why Fibonacci fans are so useful. You'll find lots and lots of examples of that. And there's also examples of where things fail and why they fail so that you can understand that as well. So if you'd like to do a trial with our League of Traders, um, we go everywhere from very, very basic technical analysis to learning advanced things like advanced trade analysis, where you're getting into trades and building positions and scaling in and scaling out of positions. Um, lots of markets are covered. You're going to see stock traders, futures traders, forex traders, and you'll find a number of very basic um, setups and strategies over here where you'll learn a lot of the details on those um, setups and strategies as well. And you'll see a lot of my own trades are going to be posted in here too with entries and exits. This is one of our other traders. So you'll see how they're taking the trades, what their entries and exits are, and 
feedback, pros and cons, and things like that in there. And this is in addition to our live classes that run for an hour every single day, uh, Monday through Friday. We meet at noon Eastern, and all of those are recorded, and you have, live, you have access to all of those recordings as well. So it's a really great educational platform. So you'll get to see me take trades live. You'll get to see me give trades live. You'll get a market outlook from me every single day, as well as a weekly outlook outlook as we go into the end of the week also as to you know what to expect on the week ahead so what it does is it reinforces that hey everything i'm teaching i'm also doing live and you're seeing it happening and playing out in real time too all right so let me grab that link again there for you those of you that are interested in joining me and uh, we have a couple of traders here with me as well. Thank you, David. It's uh, just tonyanson.com backslash June and I'll stick that up here as well too. And uh, I've been trading full time since the mid 1990s. So, you know, I've seen pretty much it all you guys I've written for I've, I've um uh written for jim jim kramer for years i had a cerebral spinal fluid leak kind of took me down for there for a couple of years but wrote for them uh real money pro you go to find me on your trading edge um festival of traders written for stocks and commodities um i'm often um featured speaker at the traders expos um money show you know i've teach I've taught classes for the CME group for International Securities Exchange, um, ICE, <laughs> NASDAQ, you name it, you guys, I've been here and you can ask me any questions you might think of. And if I don't know the answer right offhand, I know exactly who to send you to. So for example, I might not specialize in trading wheat, but I know a wheat guy I can send you to. So everything that I teach you though, as far as technical analysis goes, it applies to every market under the sun. You can be a crypto trader, Bitcoin, it does not matter. And uh, I guarantee everything I taught you today is just the tip of the iceberg, everyone. So I hope you take the very basics that I've showed you here. What you'll notice, I don't use a lot of indicators. And in fact, with the two that I showed you, the fans and the fib timings here on my own charts, I'm usually just eyeballing them. Even the 76.4% fan, you get used to looking at that time zone. I can eyeball it. I'll draw it up there. Then I'll post the fan and my drawing will be exactly where the fan was because you get used to understanding where those points are going to be. And it becomes second nature. So those are just two really good tools to give you that extra confidence in your trading and to test your timing, to say, hey, yeah, you know what? I, I'm a little bit early. If I wait just a little bit longer, I'll have less of a chance of getting flushed out and then have to get back in and then make up for that stop that I got flushed out on. You know, it's little things like that, but they add up. So thank you, David, and everyone for having me here today, and I hope you enjoyed the session, and I look forward to working with you.